tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Arnold is currently rendering a scene. It looks pretty grayish and flat, which doesn't matter because uh, the surrounding light is slowly fading out. And in just a couple of frames, the uh, light at the left, which you see now with its um, bright shine, is uh, pumping up intensity and will reach our block in just a few seconds as you can see in the render time in the timeline below Arnold is rendering not frame 95 but 95.25 and now 96.25 because it's rendering the scene with motion blur uh, so uh, it uh, always needs to see what's coming next and what uh, has happened before to render a new frame the uh, effect is very subtle, but now already you see that the surrounding light is almost gone and the light from the left is setting in massively. What will happen in just a few frames is that we'll see a movie appear on the front part of that cube. And the mov movie will continue then until the end of the animation, while the camera is getting closer and closer to the block. Now the animation is starting here. It uh, uh, It's a sequence of images which I mapped to the front face of that cube here. Uh, and I'll show you how to do this and this is what the tutorial is basically about but I just wanted to show you how this rendering uh, came about and uh, why this is the case. i briefly show you the scene and at the end i show you the full animation. So this is the block which is of interest here. The camera is here and the light from the left is here and there's a sky dome light which I fade out in the middle of the animation uh, which you, you've just seen it being almost faded out and uh, looking so grayish. And uh, This is the um, block we have. It is not a polygon cube, it's a NURBS cube. And a NURBS cube, if you have a look at the outliner, uh, consists of six faces so to say and that's uh, that's typical for the NURBS world because the NURBS world cannot deal properly with uh, edgy uh, surfaces it loves spheres etc but not uh, or planes but not uh, that block so the block consists of six um, well planes really and uh, I mapped this one with a movie and I'll show you this uh, when we create a, a scene from scratch later so this is this scene I did a uh, uh, an animation using dynamics here so the block here basically the group uh, falls down under gravity the gravity sits in the center of the scene and uh, it's an active rigid body and um, uh, the surface here is a passive rigid body so the block feels that ground the ground doesn't care about it but it uh, uh, pretends to be uh, stiff and hard so the block um, rotates a little bit, the camera gets closer and of course I tried several ways to throw the block down uh, until it lands like this so we can see the movie properly. If you want to see the movie in the viewport you need to click here and here it is. And as you can see it starts here and before that it's white and the reason for that is that I started the animation at frame uh, 100, that mapping animation for the film with the yellow dots in this case. That's from a previous tutorial I did. Okay, let's create a new scene now. And I'll show you the example with a plane. It's a polygon plane now. right mouse click and new material Arnold standard surface shader 
So it's the standard procedure, really. So it's a white plane right now. What I'll do right away is I reduce the specularity to zero. Because I don't want my screen where the movie runs to be really shiny and reflective. I could do that in order to, for example, simulate a, a an old television set, but um, I don't want to do this right now. Maybe it's just a little bit of a glossiness here. Uh, actually, this gives me the idea to pick the vertices and the ones here in the middle and press the key B, which gives me the soft selection. And then I move those things out a little bit so it's like a like an old TV. Back to this mode here. Material attributes. Uh, we have the color, which is currently white, and we map the color by clicking here. And now Maya has a movie texture, which sits under 2D textures, I guess. There's the file texture, which we usually, usually use to map a, a file. And this is for movie. It basically works the same as in Arnold. Now we go to Arnold and here under Arnold textures we have AI image. That's what we need. And the AI image wants an image name. And now you have to prepare an animation. And the best thing for Maya to handle animations is not an AVI file or whatever but single frames in a sequence numbered from 0001 to 0100 or whatever. So I select my blobs, the blobs you've just seen. So now I'll try to locate the blobby yellow animation here and I have PNG and TX files here. Uh, I actually rendered PNG files but during the process when I uh, prepared that tutorial, Arnold automatically and in the background created the TX files, which increases the performance of this uh, process really. But we do load the first PNG file of that animation. And if you have, for example, vintage film and uh, use After Effects or Premiere and um, uh, write out or save uh, the movie as individual images, a sequence of images, you can load them in to uh, Maya right here. That's the way to go. You start with the first frame and you load it into the scene. When I check the texture I can hear, I cannot see anything because the picture number one is still white. So, um, but we have to use the file sequence anyway. So we click here and in the Maya uh, movie texture, it's basically the same. You have to check the file sequence and then uh, Maya automatically creates an expression expression which progresses over time and reads one frame after the other. Um, from frame one is the frame uh, is the uh, the image number one, frame two is the image number two etc. And now you see when I move from one frame to the next you see the animation coming in. The movie basically projected right here. Now you have to Keep in mind uh, that uh, the pers uh, the dimensions of the movie, which you map on this object, uh, have to be uh, respected. And it's a 16 by 9 animation here, the, uh, the the yellow blobs. So I better pick my plane, go to P plane here, and I just scale it differently. For example, instead of 12 in this axis I choose 16 press enter and here I ch choose 9 and that number is irrelevant because it has no depth anyway so now the the image is not distorted anymore and uh, I can run the animation like this Now I want to show you uh, something which you can keep in mind to change that animation. Uh, let's select the texture again, material attributes, and here under color I have mapped my image sequence here. You, here you see the thumbnails. You can, if you want, delete the expression 
and now the animation goes like this no animation whatsoever it sticks to that frame which is currently frame uh, 59 but what we can do now is we go to frame 50 for example and we say we want the animation to be at frame 1 here and we set with a right mouse button a keyframe there's a key at frame 50 for frame number one that means the animation the yellow blobs are at frame one right here and now we step forward to say frame 100 and then since the animation of the yellow dots is 100 frames long I um, enter 100 now and set a key so the animation shows me the movie here from between frame 50 and frame 100 before that and after that it stops you can go to windows animation editors and graph editor and here you see the animation curve if you want the sequence to start and end at the same pace you just select this and click on this icon which breaks the tangents and makes it a straight curve so there's no slowing in and uh, fading out of the animation in terms of the time which is in most cases the best thing to do of course now since we're between frame 50 and frame 100 we're accelerating the animation of the yellow blobs um, by factor 2 because the original animation is actually two, uh, 100 frames long so keep this in mind and uh, last uh, remark is this if you have a polygon cube for example and you map the image sequence to the front face you run into a mapping problem and you need to think about the UV projection in this case I won't uh, follow this thread now but maybe sometimes later and uh, of course there are specialists about UV mapping out there on YouTube and uh, I'm not a specialist of UV mapping of uh, polygon surfaces so this is the animation I started rendering at the beginning of this tutorial and this is the final animation which I show you at the end and I wish you a very very good day bye bye